Even men at the top of their game find themselves wanting more from life, whether it's more meaning, unshakable confidence, a bigger impact, more money, deeper love, a hotter sex life, or a powerful legacy. Find out how good your life can be on this episode of Man Alive. Also, as I've supported men in their love and work lives for 15 years now, many men ask for the right words to say to be more successful, attractive, and desirable. But I found it's not so simple as giving scripts or lines because every man is different. So giving words or scripts would be like giving a tall, thin man a shorter, wider man's pants or vice versa. The words have to make sense for you and your personality, and there's so much happening beneath the surface that people are responding to. If you're interested in how to become a better lover and leader in your own unique way, go to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz, or you can text ALIVE to 44144. It only takes a couple minutes and you'll start to get an idea of how you can be both more respected and desired. After you fill it out, we can schedule a time to review your quiz and talk about your specific challenges and desires. So again, go to either shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text ALIVE to 44144. That's A-L-I-V-E to 44144. Enjoy this episode of Man Alive. Hello and welcome to this episode of Man Alive. I'm your host, Shana James. Excited to be here today to talk about fitness and daily rituals and what actually you can do that gives you the best ROI on your health and wellness. And I have an incredible guest here today, Di Manuel. Di, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm stoked to be here. This is going to be awesome. I love your attitude already. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the things we were talking about that you were saying right before we started recording is like, right, nobody really has regrets about eating healthy food or taking time for themselves, but it can also be like a, what do you call that? A hump to get over of like, wait, mm. what? I'm going to actually take time for myself every day, or, you know, I'm going to take a half hour out of a day that can be such a a mindset change that it's possible to take care of ourselves in that way. So I'm wondering what's been a little bit of your journey as you've shifted to taking care of yourself. Yeah. Well, I, you know, just to sort of riff on what you just said, I, I, I'm still waiting for the call from a company that says, you know, Di, we like to pay you to look after yourself. <laughs> <That'd be amazing. laughs> so if anybody's listening to this and you have a job opening, hey, yes. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, but we almost have to make fun of it that way because it's, it's one of those things like unless we make it a priority, rarely will anybody else do that for us. Yeah. And now, of course, my wife and I, we like to support each other. Right. In trying she to create can't do it for space, you. But no, she can't. At the end of the day, she can't, yeah. you know, and that's just the nut of it. Right. Like we, we have to accept that fact. So when it comes down to, to health and well-being, I, I mean, let's be honest, there's a sea of misinformation out there mm. and everyone's got a different opinion and, it, yeah. and it's it's confusing. I know. I was talking I was to a really friend today about how, like, you know, anywhere from raw vegan diet to total <laughs> carnivore diet, like, all of those are being, you know, proclaimed as the yes. right way. And yes. how do we even know? It's a scary place out there. And what I mean by that, like, I, I think you asked me about sort of how did I get started in this whole yeah. space? I mean, I didn't come to it naturally. I, in fact, came from the complete opposite end of the spectrum. I, Because we often find people that work in the health and the fitness space, especially, they usually have a very, well, they come from one of two paths, right? Yes. It's either athletes, uh -huh. always been fit into fitness, and they just love it so much that they've made a, a career out of their passion. Yep. And then there's people that have had big transformations. Yeah. I'm in that second camp. <laughs> you know, I was morbidly obese as a teenager. Mm. And from the age of nine to 14, I just had lifestyle habits that would match that state of unhealth. Uh -huh. Like it wasn't like it was rocket science, like me waking up, like, how did I get like this? It was like, you know, every day, you know, playing video games, watching movies, not very active. And on top of that, eating a lot of foods that were very poor on the nutrition value, yet high on calories. So it compounded. And, uh, you know, at 15, I sort of broke down and I was dealing with a lot of suicidal thoughts and, and, and the yeah. idea that, Hey, maybe life would be easier if it just was no life. Wow. You know, like, and, you know, we all, I think many of us have found ourselves in those situations where we have those passing moments where we think, Oh, we just want to be easier. It was just, I didn't just have to deal to with get this, out. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fortunately for me, I, I had parents that were very supportive. I had family that was very supportive. I had friends that were supportive, you know, and, and they could tell that I was hurting, Yeah, you know, and, yeah. but it wasn't until I got to the point where I was like, oh, okay, and that's enough. I want to make the change for me now. 
And that was because up to that, actually, yeah, yeah, that was when I finally realized that, yeah, you know what? I'm more afraid of the path that I'm on now. Yes. Staying as I am. Yeah. Then I am of this path that I have no idea how to get started on it to make the changes. Change is intimidating. Yes. Change so intimidating, but then oh to goodness. actually see that you were more afraid of what would yeah. become of you if you stayed where you were. Yes. Yeah. And that was the realization. And as soon as I had that realization, I was like, okay, well, either I accept the path because, you know, checking out was not an option, even mm-hmm. though the thoughts are there and the frequency of those thoughts were more and more often. Yeah. I realized that that was not going to happen. Like I, you I was pretty you weren't actually going to make that choice. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, very afraid of that choice as well, you yeah. know, and didn't feel like it was fair to my family. And mm-hmm. it just, I reconciled that I'm going to do something about this. Yeah. And it took 20 months, but I just started with a little bit of 20 everything. months to what? To release start all the or... excess weight. Okay. But so it didn't like, take 20 months to start, but it no. took 20 months to release the weight. It's funny, right? When the change first happened. Like when I made the decision, like I'm going to change, I'm going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. It happened in an instant. And when motivation is there like that, you strike it while it's hot, you know? And and fortunately for me, my dad saw it when I came out of that bathroom and I just been broke down crying and sobbing. And I came out and uh, I mean, he could tell I was rather, I was beside myself as they say, you know, and, but he could tell that when I came out and I said, you know, dad, I'm, I want to change. I want to be healthy. I want mm-hmm. I want to be fit. I want, I don't want to be like this anymore. That mm-hmm. he saw in that moment in his son, whoa, okay, this, this is, I mean, up until that point, my mom and dad were very supportive and tried to, hey, can we hire you a trainer? Can you get your gym membership? How about hire a nutritionist? Would you like to play sports? You know, like they were so encouraging all the time. Yeah. But I was like, every time they brought that up, I was like, wait, you tell me I'm fat. You tell me that I'm not good enough. You tell me that you don't love me enough, that you'll love me more if I do these. Like that was my internal dialogue. Right. That's what I was thinking. And yeah. it wasn't until I finally realized that, you know, the only thing that's going to change right now is, is me is by making the change. Yeah. yeah. And, and so what was like, yeah. how did you actually take that first step? I mean, you had the light bulb go off and then between the light bulb and the action, there's often it's hard. Oh gosh. So, and Especially, even, I just yeah. want to say, right. Yeah. You know, for, for mm-hmm. someone listening, it may be, you may not be obese. You may just be, you know, not totally in shape in the way you want to, or there may be something mm-hmm. in your life that there's a gap and you're not sure how to start taking action. So we can look at it with all of those lenses, but I'm curious for you, right. What happened in between the light bulb and the, and the action? Yeah. For me, I was pretty decided, you know, that was a Saturday morning. <laughs> you wow, know? you remember we, it that clearly. Well, I, I don't remember the exact date, but I remember yeah. that it was a Saturday morning only because we would be at my dad's every other weekend. Uh-huh. And my parents and had separated and ultimately divorced, yeah. you know, many years before that. So we had this ritual of every other weekend being at my dad's place. So I remember it being a Saturday morning and being rushed to get out of the house. So I remember, you know, expressing that I wanted a bike, you know, like in my mind, I thought, well, I know how to bike. I know how to uh-huh. cycle. I needed a new bike anyways. Uh-huh. I had friends that liked a mountain bike. So I was like, you know, here's an activity I can do on my own. It's relatively private. <laughs> you know? That was important it, to you. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it was something I did on my own for, for a good chunk of time. Because I think I, that's I great to know. have the right? confidence. You know? Yeah, right. Like, that if you don't yeah. have the confidence or you don't want to be around other people doing it, you don't have to. You can actually do it on your own. Absolutely. And so my dad saw that. And he, I, I was always... I just had a lot of gratitude towards him. You know, he, he passed a few years ago, but mm. uh, I often think about just him and his willingness to, to take me to buy a bike that day, like yeah. literally that day. That day. And that afternoon, I was it on my first ride. Wow. You know? Amazing. So that, that wasn't week, very I went far to the library. the light bulb and the action, well, right? That was like, that was quick. That was on just taking immediate action to start yeah. moving. And, yeah. and But I realized there was a lot of variables, that, or I should say unknowns, that I was intimidated by, especially as it relates to, to knowledge and understanding and understanding mm-hmm. about myself. And how did I get to this point? Like I had an idea, like put two and two together, you figure out, well, that's how you make four. I, I yeah. knew that my lifestyle, was there was a direct correlation between what I was doing daily for those yes. five years that created that result. So on that same sort of track of thinking, I believe that if I could educate myself on alternative options, I could write the ship, so to speak. Yeah. And so I went to the library. My kids laughed. Like, Dad, why don't you just Google it? I'm like, I'm older yeah, than Google. Hey, we're, we're too old. <laughs> Wait, I have a question before you before yeah. you go to that. I'm wondering, yeah. you know, for a man who wants to make a health or fitness change, mm. do you think it's important that he have the knowledge or would it be more like he would, you know, work with someone like you or go to someone like you who has the knowledge? What 
what feels more uh, more important or that's a how would you do it really good question and you know to be right to the point I, I think it ultimately boils down to like three questions every time we encounter change i think there's like three questions we all ask you know once can i do this mm-hmm. then we follow it up if i do this will it work and then thirdly is like is it worth it uh-huh. you know and and more appropriately it's and this is the tough one am i worth it right mm-hmm. like rephrasing that third question and and when I think about that, that, that can I do this? There's often this, at least me as a man, and at times when I've wanted to make some really big shifts in my life, mm-hmm. that's often a question I ask myself is like, can I actually do this? Like this mm-hmm. change that I want to see happen in my life, can I actually do this? Like, do I have that self belief? Uh-huh. And I often, because right, how would you know? Yeah, well, you, that's the thing. You don't, you sort of have to trust in yourself that you have the ability to figure it out or. I did a bit of both, you know, was the standpoint that I recognize I need some support. There were right. things that I didn't know. I didn't understand. I, And to be honest, I was really scared because I was intimidated by this gap in the knowledge side of things. Yes. And so, yeah, going to the library was like step one. I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to get books in on fitness and nutrition. And You're going to look at the card in. catalog. Oh my gosh. Did I ever? <laughs> I, I remember going through old magazines and like the micro sheet. What is it? Micro oh, niche, micro-fiche. microfilm or micro niche. Right? Yeah. 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 Whatever it is. Like that micro thing fiche. where you put in the car, you know, yeah. cartridge and you, oh my gosh, like totally dating myself. But I Me went too. through that process. And then as I had a little bit of confidence, or at least a little bit of understanding, just even basics of nutrition, like the macronutrients. What are macronutrients? How does our body act when we eat certain things? Yeah. How does our pancreas work? You know, like what is insulin? Like just some basic foundational mm-hmm. understanding. And with that, I then had a little bit more confidence, yeah. a lot more clarity, uh-huh. which then allowed me to feel much more sure of that next step. Right. You know, that, that I was just action, thinking, as you said that, you know, it's like every step gives you more clarity and more confidence for the next step. So you don't have yes. to know the whole journey when you start. Correct. That's exactly right. And, 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 and you, I eventually found people though also to support me. And I just want to, you know, yeah. full disclosure, I, yeah. I went as far as I could on my own. And then I got to a point where I had that little bit more confidence. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to ask for a little bit more help now. And you know, oh, that's been some, I've so struggled good. with that all my life though, asking others for help. And you and most yeah. of the men I know. Yeah. I mean, most women I know too, or people of any gender, but particularly for men, you know, you guys aren't raised to be like, Hey, can I have some help with this? Exactly. Yeah. And so that was something that I, I reluctantly eventually uh-huh. got help. <laughs> asked for some help, but it was more so in the form of creating workout buddies or accountability partners, uh-huh. you know, like, Oh, Hey, we're going to go for a ride tomorrow at X time. So, you know, now I had this commitment to somebody else to show up. And right. That's where it started to really compound in a positive way when I started realizing there's community. And when you get around more people that have similar wants and desires and, mm-hmm. and ambitions and, and are a positive mind, it's amazing what happens. Like you know, everybody it's, lifts it's, each other up. Well, it does, right? It's contagious. As, yeah. as they say, yeah, the rising tides raises all ships. And, yes. and it felt very much like that in my own life. And yeah. my mindset shifted a lot at the same time, my perspective and belief in myself too. So, you know, there's a lot of little things that were happening all at the same time. Yes. And and I think that's the cool thing about change, right? Like it happens when we want it, but it only continues to happen if we continue to just do the things that we know is going to bring us closer. Right. Right. I think about meditation where it's like, you know, Mm -hmm. a good meditation is not one where you end up being calm and Zen, but when you (laughs) actually sit your butt on the cushion or I'm working on a book right now. And in the book class, he says, I think it was Dan Pink who said books are more about butts than brains. Like you have to sit down and get your ass to do it. And, you know, I'm thinking about what you've said or what I've, I've, known from your process or your procedure, your rituals, your daily rituals. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like you have a 2% (laughs) that people can start to implement. Well, I often hear, and maybe you probably heard this a lot too. It's like, oh, I don't really have the time. I'm so busy. (laughs) Oh, I've said it so many times. (laughs) And here's just a little thing from a language perspective for, and I know I can already tell that you're very big on language and how you speak to yourself and what you say to others. And especially as soon as we become parents, we become hyper aware of that, especially (laughs) knowing that our influence on those little years. When you hear them speak, hear it back, those words, and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said that one. (laughs) What did I do? Yeah. It's like, can I take that back, please? <laughs> and uh, which is never ask that because as soon as you say that, they say it more. But the, this whole aspect of, of language, you know, like 
my wife's a, a good reminder that she, she often cues me when she catches me using language that might be negative or, mm-hmm. or self-defeating. Yes. You know, so when it comes to the mindset piece, you know, especially it, it's like, I get to do certain things. It's not like I have to go to the gym or I have to work out today. It's like, yeah. I get to do this, you know? And, and so looking for more positive ways to attach some of my desires and wants and ultimately mm-hmm. the outcomes I like. And because I find if I come from that perspective, it one feels a little bit less overwhelming yes. at times. Yeah. Secondly, it's just, there's something to it. You know, like when we smile, like just even forcing a smile, you feel the biology shift in yeah. you, you know, like, yep. so language is just right. one and of saying, those- I have to, I can yeah. already feel that it's like, Ugh, I have to do it. Versus, <laughs> oh, this is something I get to do. And, you know, I used to think that that was a little bit of hogwash for a while, but even more recently, I've just been, I've been playing with that and experimenting. So, you know, for you listening also, right don't take our word for it, try it out and see what happens and see what happens as you make that shift. So, okay. So if someone starts to get to take care of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you find yourself using the term busy, just full. Oh yeah. My life is full. Full. And and that's the way we, we always say that now it's like, because it's full of the things that we've said. Yes. Right. You know, it's like, or if you've been saying yes to things you don't want to say yes to, right. That that's a, a shift you can start to make. Big time. <laughs> I'm still working on that one. Uh, but, but uh, uh, you know, because of the time piece yeah. and being someone that's been in the wellness industry now, gosh, I'm in my 26th year of, of working with people in the fitness and wellness space. And yeah. I hear it a lot, you know, it's like, I just don't have time. And yeah. it's like, okay, well, do you have 30 minutes? Do you have 30 minutes every 24 hours? Like mm. really? And I want you to think about your calendar. Do you have at least 30 minutes? 2%. Of your every day. And it's like, well, I think, I think I can do that. I think I can find 30 minutes. I'm like, you don't have to find it. I know you have it. <laughs> like, it's like, this isn't even up for debate. As much as I asked you a question, it's more rhetorical than anything. But seriously, yeah. you know, and this is what's going on in my mind, obviously. And I'm like, no, no, no. Love with kindness, kindness, right. support. <laughs> It's okay. And because I know what it's like to be on that side too. Right. I know like what it's it, like to, to have well, thought. I don't have 30 minutes. I don't know how to fit yeah. this in. <laughs> and so, Wrapping our head around that. And I find that most people are very receptive to that. Okay. Well, if I've got 30 minutes, how do I make the most of that? What yes. do I do? Because it's yes. decision fatigue, right? We're mm-hmm. like, oh, what am I going to do with 30 minutes? I mean, most of us spend more than 30 minutes a day just trying to figure out what program we want to watch on Netflix or, right. or Prime or whatever. Like, but if you look at how much time you actually spend scrolling, uh-huh. <laughs> you've got 30 minutes, you know? Yes. And that's why I would say recognize your own patterns, start documenting and tracking what you do every day, as uh-huh. mundane as that's it may be. That's very powerful. Oh, you do it for three days, you'll be relatively surprised yeah. at, at what you'll how you learn. spend your time. And so 30 minutes, if you got 30 minutes, which I know everybody does that what I found to be one of the most effective ways to maximize our results with that micro commitment yeah. is 15 minutes of movement with purpose. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is like, just move your body to create an increased heart rate. Uh-huh. Okay. Like I'm not being so prescriptive of saying this many beats per minute. I want you doing this many reps, like just right. Move. It doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have like any, uh, or it doesn't have to be weightlifting here. You get to choose. You choose like, okay. whatever it is that you, if you can get outside and walk at a brisk pace for 15 minutes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's a win. Great. So 15 minutes of movement with purpose, mm-hmm. five minutes, mindful meditation. This is just taking time to, to turn that focus from everything outside of us to turn it inward. Whew. Turn it all down. Five minutes. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. And then 10 minutes of personal development. So this comes to how do you feed your mind? You know, like what are you putting in every day and being just hyper aware of that and and now starting to choose what you want to feed your mind with. Mm -hmm. And so it could be an amazing podcast like this one, and uh, it could be (laughs) a YouTube video. It could be a TEDx talk. Like there's, we have so much amazing information. It's incredible. That's often how I start my day. And, you know, I'm, I am a, a single parent And my kid, you know, happens to sleep for a certain length of time, right? So I make sure that I wake up before that. And then I start my day by listening to something and then go into the movement, right? And then the meditation. So I'm I'm really finding that this is, it's changing my life. I mean, before the pandemic, Mm -hmm. I said I didn't have time to do it. And then during the pandemic, it kind of became clear, right? I started as I was tracking what I'm doing. It's like, oh, well, first of all, I'm not driving the hour back and forth I used to to school. I'm not doing, you know, all these other things. Like I don't have an excuse yeah. anymore. And now I imagine as life starts to open back up again, now I'm attached to this practice because I feel healthier. It becomes a lifestyle. 
Right. Yeah. Like it, it really does. And, and people often say, well, what do you mean by lifestyle? I'm just mean, you know, our subconscious does a lot for us. <laughs> I mean, if we actually look at everything that we actually do in a day, yeah. the subconscious is doing a lot of that for us, yes. you know, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Not always. It depends on right. what depends those, on, <laughs> true. Those depends on how your is working. Yeah. Yeah. But when we start to recognize that, you know, we are products of what we do regularly yeah. and we do often and, you know, good or bad. I mean, we, we can get into a moral debate on this if we want, but mm-hmm. regardless, it, it's just recognizing these little habits, they do compound yeah. either positively or negatively. And, and if we want to start shifting things, well, we got to shift, but it's going to take a lot of mental effort initially. Because yes. you're going against the grain. Neuroscience, they'll talk about neuroplasticity. They'll talk about we can learn to override bad habits or yes. habits that we want to change, but it takes time and there's no set amount. There's no set but amount event, of time that it takes? No. I mean, it's anywhere between uh, what I've seen is, is as little as like 18 days up to 266 days if you look at like an old MIT research wow. that they did on this. And But I mean, <laughs> how do we know? Like I talk about 20 months when I was morbidly obese. Yeah. It was about 20 months where all of a sudden I realized I wasn't thinking about how I was living anymore. I was just uh-huh. living my life. Yeah. And I would eat certain things. I don't think about it. I just eat it. <laughs> I would move my body a certain way because I just wanted to and I uh-huh. enjoyed it. And so 20 months till you got to the point of which I don't know if everybody knows this model, but the it. unconscious competence. Yeah. Right? You know, where you, yes. you don't have to think about it anymore. But I imagine there were many phases along the way. Yeah, there are. And, you know, obviously, as I'm talking about this 30 minutes, this 2%, I often get people reach out to me and they're like, so is this all I got to do? And, and, you know, I'm set for life. And I'm like, uh, no, but it's the least that you're worth. Right. You know, and I hope you understand that because I've had a lot of people that have made this commitment, they've done it for a few months, and then they get this belief again, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. one, there's some clarity because you can be quite prescriptive with how you vest that 30 minutes every day. Yeah. You are making a commitment to do it every day. Mm-hmm. And over time, this compounds in a really positive way. And, and it opens up your, there's a part of your self-belief and self-worth that just, it explodes yeah. from a real positive way. It just, it grows because all of a sudden you start to realize that, whoa, these results that all of a sudden I'm feeling, I did that. Yes. You know, I did that. And gosh, what a good feeling that is. You know, just a little backstory to this. Like I remember at I must have been just newly 15 at the time. And this is when I just started the whole mountain biking thing, right? So mm-hmm. I'm morbidly obese teenager, riding this mountain bike by myself. And uh, I, I was fortunate. I grew up outside of Toronto in a small rural community. You yeah. know, it was about a population of 30,000. We were on the, just on the outskirts of town. So if I turned one direction, I was downtown in like five minutes, uh-huh. or I could go the other direction and I'm in farm country. Oh, and so, nice. so I like the seclusion of the farm country. No one would have to see me. There's very few cars. But going down Concession Road, about 10 minutes into the ride, there was always this big hill, Concession <sighs> Hill. And trust me, like now I live <laughs> in Western Canada, in Vancouver. I look at the North Shore Mountains every day. Those are mountains, okay? Real mountains, like yes. Rockies. Yes. Now, back then- <laughs> The hill up, felt like a mountain, I would imagine. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Like, to me, it was Everest. Yeah. And especially being that really overweight, self-conscious ugh, kid. and. Yeah. I remember the very first time I made it about a third of the way up. And, it, you know, I get to that point where it's just like, I feel like I'm standing still. I'm trying to move and the bike's just like frozen. And yes. I'm like, okay, I'm not moving. And then all of a sudden, you know, gravity kicks in. It's like, okay. Yeah. And fall over. And, but instead of turning around and going home, I decided to just walk the bike up. Mm-hmm. And so this became my new ritual. It's like every time I come to that hill, I, I just see how much further can I make it? Uh, <laughs> you know, can I make it past where I made it yesterday? Yeah, with no and, shame, right? There doesn't have to be no, a shame in that. I was also by myself, right? Yeah. Now, if I had other people there with me, I would have been probably embarrassed yeah. a little but bit. Uh, great that you, you know, chose, shaming. right? You knew how yeah. to start in a way that worked yeah. for you. Three weeks in, maybe three and a half. Either way, it was less than a month. You got up the hill. I made it. I made it to the top and I did it all by myself and the sense of belief and pride in myself, but just, oh my gosh, what a feeling. And it was right then and there that I knew that change is always possible if I want to make it possible. You know, like if I want to make the effort, I know I can create results. I can do it. I love it. And I think we all need one of those experiences you know, and, and yeah. more than just one. I mean, obviously this happens all the time in our lives. We're always learning new things. And I just think we sometimes forget that we have this amazing ability that's already in us from a DNA yes. perspective. We are resilient as humans. Yeah. I mean, there's a reason why we dominate this planet now, good or bad. You're a climate change person. 
not so good. Right. But we've done a pretty good job at, yeah. you know, just surviving yes. and thriving. And I think sometimes it's just getting out of our own way, right? Yeah, so, I think so, so too. Yeah, and but you wrote a whole book about this, yes? The Whole Life I did, manifesto. The Whole Life Fitness Manifesto. Whole Life Fitness people, Manifesto book. Mm-hmm. People want to be prescriptive. I can be pretty prescriptive. But here's the thing. After you've got that 2% yeah. and you get comfortable and confident with that and you start seeing the results, mm-hmm. it opens up your world, like quite literally. You, you start to realize that some of those things that you were intimidated to say yes to before, now you're saying yes to. In fact, you even start to seek it out. Like I got into rock climbing. I mean, what? I got into never would have thought. Yeah. No, I, I got into the fitness industry. I've made a, a living for yeah. 26 years supporting people with lifestyle changes. It all started for me just saying enough's enough. I want to make some changes. And I started Amazing. riding on my bike. You know, Amazing. like we just don't know what that one decision is going right. to lead to. Yes. So, Again, and yeah. you don't have to know the whole path. Okay. I have a oh, question that yeah. we'll see if you want to answer. Mm-hmm. Um, I read on your website that you're called the moose. <laughs> I run like one. I was wondering if you would tell us why. Because you run like one? What is I, do. I am not graceful. I'm like, I'm 210, 6'1", a bigger dude, bigger frame. And uh, when I run, anybody that's within well, probably a couple of blocks, they know I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and also I love to hike and uh, there's this hill called the Grouse Grind. And I shouldn't say it's a hill. It's a, it's a mountain. It's a mountain, and, uh, actually. It's a, it's a one hour hike. Well, hour, hour and a half depends on how you're feeling, yeah. uh, but it's straight up a mountain. And it's uh, funny because it's a single track, right? And uh, very often I, I'll have friends and they'll be joking. It's like, oh, we can hear moose, moose behind us, you know, because I'm huffing and puffing and you, you just get out of the way. You know, if I'm coming up behind <laughs> you, move over. And uh but that's part of the nickname. And also Archie Comics back in the day, one of my yes, first I coaches. Yeah. My jawline and frame is similar to, to Moose. And so there's sort of the double meaning there. But the uh, double meaning. Anyways. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Well, this moose. has been amazing. I would just curious if there's anything else you want to leave men with that we haven't spoken about yet. You know, I think well, I have an upcoming TEDx talk and I'll be speaking specifically about vulnerability in men. Ah, and, that's what my TEDx talk was about. I have no idea. Tell That's me incredible. more. Tell us more. Yeah. Well, I, I talk a bit about my backstory, specifically mm-hmm. a question that my wife asked me 11 years ago. Yeah. And it was that question that literally changed this last decade and what I envisioned the rest of my life. And wow. going through that process, I recognized that I need some help, but there was also some things that I wasn't very comfortable with and, and specifically my relationship with other men. Yeah. And so it sort of opened my eyes to that. And then a few years ago, while we were living in Bali, we, we were there for two and a half years. And uh, I started a men's group nice. uh, called Mentorship Mondays. And, you know, it was just a, a weekly gathering of men for dinner and conversation. No Perfect. alcohol, no drugs, no drama, like just actual just, deep, real it, conversation, real conversation, you know, and without that fear of being judged or having mm-hmm. what we share used against mm-hmm. us, like it was just very, it opened my eyes to a lot of things, but it also mm-hmm. opened my heart. And uh, I've made some just amazing friends through this whole journey. And, and my talk will be speaking a little bit about our Mentorship Monday community. We, we're now in five continents and uh, multiple time zones and over 500 men showing up to these meetings. And it's just been amazing to see how it's grown organically because oh, it's fantastic. all free. There's no hidden agenda, just men showing up authentically for other men. Thank and you. Uh, so, so that's important. That's what's alive and real for me right now. If, if I, I need to speak to that, but other than that, you know, it's, I'm just excited for any man that's out there. Realize that you already have everything that you need within you. Yeah. Just sometimes you just got to get around somebody else that says, Hey, I believe in you too. I, I was just going to say, right. I believe in you. Yeah. Thank you so that's much. That's Thank need. you for Thank creating you. the community for, you know, being willing to be vulnerable, right. About your own journey you. and for believing in people. I can feel that in you. Thank you so much. I absolutely love what you're doing for, mm. for men everywhere. And okay. uh, I can't wait to go on. I got to go find your TED talk now. Yeah. <laughs> I had no I idea. Oh my gosh. I feel <laughs> remiss that I didn't have a chance to, to already know that before That's our conversation right. today, but uh, I can't wait Sorry. to go and dive in. This is, this is awesome. Awesome. So cool. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad you joined us for today's episode of Man Alive. I hope you enjoyed our conversation and it gave you something to consider and explore in your life. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful for you to subscribe and write a quick review that helps men like you find us. And again, head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz or text the word ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144 to get a sense of how you can become a better lover and leader. 
You'll start to see how you can be both more respected and desired in your unique and genuine way. If you don't feel as confident or as excited about life or love as you'd like to be, this quiz is a really great starting point and will guide you toward a more passionate love life and a more inspiring and successful career. So again, text ALIVE, A-L-I-V-E, to 44144, or head over to shanajamescoaching.com slash quiz. Join us each week for a new episode of Man Alive.